This is Ben Lecours, co-founder and senior consultant for System Center Dudes. Today, we'll talk about the top new feature released since the first current branch version of SCCM. For this video, we are using an SCCM 2010 sites. In no particular order, here's the feature that you should be using or at least know they exist. Number one, the Cloud Management Gateway. If you are new to the concept, the SCCM CMG the main advantage is that it doesn't expose your SCCM server to the internet. The downside is that it requires an Azure subscription, which bring the recurring cost. Since its first release in 2018, more and more features were added. Starting with 2002, the CMG now support token-based authentication and eHTTP, which greatly reduced the installation requirements. Starting with 2010, you can use boot media, media or re-image internet-based device that connect through a CMG. We strongly encourage using the, the SCCM Cloud Management Gateway to manage clients on the internet since this feature will evolve with time and the traditional way support should go away. Number two, CM Pivot. SCCM has always been good with reporting and inventory of its managed device, but SCCM data is up to date that the last time inventory has been run. CM Pivot allows SCCM administrator to initiate a live query on selected computer on a specific topic. The result of that query can be then used to mitigate and fix potential issue. How many times were you asked what the current state of as of now? Well, you finally be answered appropriately with CM Pivot. Starting with 1906, you can use CM Pivot as a standalone app. You can run CM Pivot outside the Configuration Manager console to view the real-time status of the of your device in your environment. Don't know where to, to start? We have a complete blog, blog post on the subject, but let's show you how to use it. Just go into a device collection, right click the collection you want to use, and just click Start SAM Pivot. So simple. We have a collection of query you can use on our website. Feel free to check that out. Number three. Collection Query Statement Results. You can now preview the query result when you create or edit a query for a collection membership. When you select Edit Statement, select the green triangle and the query properties on your collection to show the query preview results. Just select a collection, right-click, go into Properties, Membership Rules, click a query, click Edit, Edit Query Statement, You now have a green arrow to preview your query results. Very effective. Number four, nested task sequence. In a task sequence, you can now add a step to run another task sequence. It creates a parent-child relationship between the task sequence. With child task sequence, you can create mod more modular, reusable task sequence. To add this step in the task sequence editor, just go into add button, general, and run task sequence. The wizard will prompt you to select the task sequence. From there, you can select another task sequence. Number five, create and run scripts from the SCCM console. You can run and deploy PowerShell script from the SCCM console. In addition, all directly for the SCCM, the SCCM console, you can edit your script, import existing script, approve or deny script, run script on specific collection, and examine the results of the script. This can be useful to run on a script quickly without the burden of creating a package or an application. Unlike standard deployment, when you deploy script, they are almost immediately using client operation. So in the software library, you get the new node scripts where you've got your script. You can edit your script, approve it, copy it. And after that, 
you can just deploy it to a selected collection. Just right click, run script, and your script is there. Number six, collection evaluation from the console. Collection evaluation viewer is integrated within the SSM console. No more need to run the old CA viewer tool from the configuration manager tool. Remember when you had to download the SCCM toolkit? Well, that's not needed anymore. So if you go into device collection, you can add, you see the new field are there. So you can see the evaluation last completion title per collection. You also have new node here at the, at the bottom. And if you go into the monitoring pane, collection evaluation is there. So you can see if you have some evaluation that are go going right now. As a bonus tip, also know that all the SCCM tools are now included in your SCCM installation folder into the CD latest folder, into the SMS setup and the tools folder. So you got all the tools you had in the SCCM toolkit. Number seven, collection relationship. You can now view dependencies relationship between collection and graphical format. It include limiting include and exclude relationship. This can be helpful to understand the impact of a deployment. To use this feature, just go into the asset and compliance node, into device collection, right click a collection and select view relationship at the bottom. Number eight, PXC without WDS on a Windows 10 computer. This feature changed the design and planning of SCCM site. Before 1806, if you had a remote site with only one distribution point and wanted to PXC boot and imaging, you'll have, you had to use an OS server because Windows deployment service were, was required. You could also use a third party solution with additional cost. Now you can use a client OS, Windows 7, Windows 8, or Windows 10 to respond to PXC requests without WDS. This is a game changer as you could basically remove any server OS from remote site if they were just acting as a distribution point. Let's see how, how to configure that. So if you go into administration, distribution point, if you click a distribution point and go into its properties, Into the PXC, you have the, now the option enable a PXC responder without WDS. Number nine, search within a task sequence. If you had a big task sequence with many groups and step, it can belong to find a specific step. You can now search the task sequence editor using the search box at the top. Just right click a test sequence, click edit, and you can use the find to find various condition and steps. Number 10, collect logs file from a client. You can now trigger a device to upload its client log to the site server by sending a client notification action from the SCSM console. Just go into Asset and Compliance, go into a collection, find your problematic device onto, onto the client the diagnostic menu, just select cli Collect Client Logs. Number 11. Console dashboard. The SCCM console has evolved with time. Numerous new dashboards are available to give you a better overview of your device. We love seeing easy visual of our, our data from our device. Console them into the console. In the software library, 
you've got the Windows 10 servicing, the Microsoft Edge management, the Office 365 client management, into the monitoring pane, you've got the cloud management one, if you've got a CMG. Pretty cool. And into the client status, the client health dashboard can help you deploy your client on your machines. Number 12, client peer cache. Client peer cache allow your content deployment to client in a remote location. Peer cache is a built-in solution that enables the client to share content with other clients directly from their local cache. This can reduce when traffic, as not all clients will reach the remote DP to get their content. To enable that, go into the administration pane, into a client settings, into the client cache setting, enable as peer cache source. Number 13, send feedback from the console. From the CCM console, you can send feedback directly to the Microsoft product group. In the upper right corner of the console, select the smile frown icon. In the feedback window, provide details about your submission and send it. Number 14, import a single index. In SCCM 1902, when you import a single WIM image, you can import a specific index rather than all image in the file. With this option, you can have smaller image file and you can perform fa faster on offline servicing. When you import an OS image, click Browse. Select your image, check the box to extract a specific image, and from there you can select only the edition you want. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up or subscribe to our channel. See ya!